a situation you're going to find yourself in all the time is a front headlock. I don't like locking my hands from a front headlock. I'm not teaching a guillotine. I want to show you how to get to the back from the front headlock. So I'm a big chin. I like the chin and I like to come to the elbow and pull it so that I can create a lot of pressure, tremendous amount of pressure. And I'm going to be off my, off my uh, knees completely, putting all this pressure basically right here. My shoulder is there. I'm dropping down at my hip. I'm lifting with my chin. I'm pulling with my, uh, his elbow. Okay. So I have a tremendous amount of pressure here. The whole time now I want to watch his knee. If I'm, I pull and his knee, then I'm going to, and he's got a pretty good wide base, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my shoulder just a little bit and I'm going to run at a angle and it's going to drop him to his hip here. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to grab his hip here. And the reason I do this is because now he can't turn over and face me to continue wrestling me and then see where my chest is behind him. I'm going to use that to wedge him up. So then now if I want to take his back, right? Cause this is jujitsu. If I want to take his back now I'm here, right? And so it's very difficult for him to turn into me now. Okay. Especially when I have a two on one. Now this is me personally, cause I'm a back guy. Uh, if you, if you're a arm bar person, then you can step over an arm bar. I, per I personally like to wedge them here and take their back, right? get, get behind them. And then I can start working my chokes. And I do this in the gi cause I primarily train in the gi. Um, I'm just teaching you no gi cause you can see, well, you can't see everything very well. You can't see my arms, you know, when I have a gi on. Okay. So that's the first one. If he brings his knee forward, remember I'm, I'm at the knee, I'm at the elbow, distal elbow. I have his chin, right. Cause, and I have my, my shoulder right in the back of his, this pocket right here. Okay. And I'm lifting both. I'm pulling his elbow. I'm lifting on his chin. I'm driving on my feet so he can carry all of my weight. Now, if he doesn't give me that knee, okay, and he keeps it behind, the second thing I'm going to do is, well, I can either, uh, well, let me see if, let's do this one first. If he gives me this space, I'm going to go head in the hole and keep his chin. See when I go head in the hole here, because he's going to want to protect his elbow back here and not let me get around. That's why I, that's why I lengthen this. I go head in the hole here. Okay. I don't want to come up to his waist because he can stand up and get out. I'm going to either come here or even the far ankle is better and drive him over and walk around. Okay. And then crawl up. Yeah. He's going to give me a fight. It's wrestling or jujitsu, right? He's going to give me a fight, but if I can, and I can re-secure this, I can get this two on one again, right? The gift wrap situation and take his back. Okay. So all of these, I want to teach you as variations on how to take the back. So the first one, drive him over. That's a Greco Roman thing. Okay. The reason that the first one that I drive him over, it's like doing this, but I don't like doing this knee tap because he can arm drag me and pull me by and take my back. So I use the old Greco way that Andy taught me here, run him over to that hip. If he pulls his knee back and he doesn't give it to me, I go ahead in the hole and either come here, right? And run him over, right? If he gives me the cradle, he gives me the cradle, take his back, right? If I end up in side control, big deal better than it was. I'm in a better controlling position. The third is if I go to pull him, he doesn't pull that knee forward. He's going to, you know, he's not giving me this. Maybe he's starting to work on my hands and stuff. I'm going to start circling my feet like this. Okay. And I'm going to whip him by and I'm, and I'm not going to have this much space. Okay. This is just me showing you for demonstration purposes. After I whip his head by this hand comes up underneath. And everything I, I was te teaching this before, I end up on him. Okay, get my knee in that space. Come here. So we're here. Okay, I'm pulling him. He doesn't pull his knee forward. I don't feel like I'm going to be able to get the head in the hole because he's being super tough and he's pulling that by. I start circling. Okay, and it looks something like this. I'm going, I circle, pull him by on top. Now I got his back. And anything that you do from here, if it's me, I'm going to get on him like like a like. A crab man <laughs> you know and I'm on and then I can get my legs in okay third thing or fourth thing that was the third one let's say he's really good at doing like baseball bat grip on my hands right because like I get here this is not the end of it a lot of people I see when I was coaching high school would freak out and want to bail out from here and start backing up don't back up look when he grabs go ahead baseball grab like okay. look look where his 
see this? Now he gave me another grip. So I was here on his chin and he baseball grabbed my hands. I grabbed his wrist here, okay? And I, remember I still have control over the elbow here. I pull it by, I stick my knee in here, okay? So now I have the inside control. Now, you can see why this was Andy Saris's thing for Greco, because I could, you know, do the Alexander Karelin, you know, reverse body lock slam, okay? But that doesn't do anything in jujitsu. But what it does is it gives me this inside position for now, back in on the legs, throw a leg in, right? I'm in on top. And for me, if it's me, I'm getting the padlock, right? And I'm throwing my legs in, and now I'm starting to work a system. And I'm underneath both arms, so he can't get to his back as easily, okay? Most of the time, I don't fall to my hip. I just try to drive him forward. But you can see what position it gave me when we were here, okay? And I grabbed his hand and pulled. And I end up here. See, now I'm on. And I always, no matter what, okay, for me, I always come here, and I clamp him, and I come under the arms the best I can and start trying to look for wrists and stuff because now he can't stand up. I have, you know, I have taken a post away from him so I can start driving him forward, right? And I can, I can like try to get legs in on him, right? And start trying to take, start trying to take his back, choke him, whatever it is that you work. So those four, pretty much the staples of all you really need to have a successful back take um, from the front headlock situation. You're gonna end up on front headlocks. Doesn't matter how you get there. I didn't show you how to get there because it could happen off a shot, it could happen off, you know, we're standing and I pull them down, like from an underhook situation, whatever. But I'm a big chin person with the elbow control because it extends them, makes them weak, and it allows my hands to continue to move as opposed to locking my hands and being stuck, right? Because now I'm sort of one dimensional. Obviously, yes, you could guillotine from there, and it's something that I'm working on, but in terms of back takes, that's what this video is about. Let me know how that works out for you. Thanks. Uh, like and subscribe. If you like the content, share it. If you really like it, leave some comments. Thank you.